Okay. We'll go ahead and start then. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us and uh, being on time to this um, magnificent session that you're going to hear about boundaries. Um, my friend Thomas J. Nelson has been uh, in the business for a really long time. He's been an award-winning residential realtor since 1999, both in the San Francisco Bay Area, where he was born and raised, and now in San Diego, where he and his bride of 20 years, Alina uh, Nelson, now live, and they've been there since 2003. Um, Thomas has been a coaching student of both Ninja Selling and Buffini and Company since 1999 as well. So he's been around, he knows his stuff, he's put some systems in place to help him with time management. Um, <clears throat> he's an amazing husband, dad, lifelong entrepreneur. He, he owns a house, a mobile DJ business in the 1980s. Uh, to 2000s, a house painting business in the 1990s, property management business since 1989. He's been interviewed on numerous TV shows, radio programs, magazine articles, podcasts, and is a former podcast host and published author, student pilot, and a drummer. Maybe we'll get to hear him do some drumming. <laughs> Uh, Thomas proudly owns and operates Vision Drive Realty, Inc., a working by referral business model brokered by Big Block Realty in San Diego. And I'm so excited. I've heard his presentation before and wanted to uh, invite him in to share some of these tips and um, important life lessons that we can all apply to our businesses and our lives as well. So thank you for joining us, Thomas, and I will let you take it away. Thanks right. for coming. Thank you for having me, Melinda. It's uh, your invitation that got me here, so I appreciate that. And uh, uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula Association of Realtors, greetings. Good morning. Um, I envy where you guys live and work. I, um, I had a client that lived there. Um, not far from the Wayfarers Chapel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a lot of business with her in San Diego to the point where I could not turn down a lunch invitation. So I drove up there one day and was blown away at how beautiful your area is. And that chapel, she took me to the chapel and it was just amazing. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, very much uh, love where you uh, live and work as well. Thank you for having me. I'm going to yeah. um, get the screen share going here so we can get underway. And Melinda, will you just confirm you can see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's there. Pardon? It's there. Uh-huh. Okay, wonderful. All right. And I'm just going to, I got to change the uh, gallery view here so I can actually see my own screen. <laughs> okay. Well, um, this, this is entitled Recharge to Take Charge, so you can create longevity in your real estate career. Uh, whether you're newer in the business or you've been in like me, for, I'm in my 24th year. Um, I, I constantly need reminders and I always update my training and my education because you, you know, when you get into the minutia of your day, you, you kind of forget some of the, the basic principles that keep you afloat. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get the controls going here and we'll get underway. Okay. So I'm not going to um, read my bio because uh, uh, Melinda just read it to you. But um, the one thing I'll mention is I am a third generation realtor and uh, I, I uh, was around real estate my entire life. Uh, I joined Buffini and Company Coaching uh, four months into my real estate career. So I got real lucky. I met a great coach, which allowed me to meet some amazing realtors and people throughout the country, Melinda being one of them. And you will see her happy face here on my uh, SoCal Real Estate Connection Business Alliance. Um, I call it a business alliance because we're, we're not technically a team. Um, we have a handshake agreement that ties the 12 of us together and we cover Southern California as, as a team mentality. Um, so, but when we get referrals from out of the area, oftentimes people don't understand the scope uh, of Southern California, and they think we're going to show them Orange County, Anaheim, Chula Vista, and La Jolla. Uh, 
And so this is our way of being able to let local area experts with same training and like-minded business ethics serve our clients. And then once they finally settle on an area, they're able to um, work with that area expert. And it's worked out fantastic. We've mm -hmm. had the team originally started it about almost 13 years ago now. And um, it's been a great product of um, coming out of coaching. Mm -hmm. um, before you go on, can you go back one slide more in your bio that you had on the screen? I saw a couple of uh, differences. Um, you said, oh, okay, on this list that I didn't mention, you said Ger oh, Gerber E-Myth Academy 1995 as well. Yeah, um, so my, um, my introduction to coaching actually came when I owned my entertainment company when I was a mobile DJ. Uh, I was in property management at that point because I was already investing in real estate, but I was not, I had no plans to be a realtor. My, my grandparents were realtors. My parents were realtors. Um, I was not going to fall into that quote unquote trap. <laughs> um, but I, um, I read Michael E. Gerber's The E-Myth and at the back of the book that blew me away to me, it's the Bible of entrepreneurship. Um, there was an offer to take his coaching for uh, E-Myth Academy. And mm -hmm. I don't know what compelled me back then, but I did it. Um, and it, I had a year of coaching with Michael Gerber. I got to meet the man a few times. Since then, 20 some odd years later, I've interviewed him twice on my podcast. And I've um, helped him uh, operate his Dreaming Room events um, as a staff member. Uh, it's just been a wonderful relationship over almost 30 years. And that's what introduced me to the concept of coaching, uh, which is why when Ninja Selling came along and Brian Buffini came along, I, I had an open mind and an open heart to receive it and be coachable. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then our, um, so I want to go over uh, today, really my, my my presentation is to kind of uh, have you think about who's running who. Are you running your business or is it running you? Uh, I have nothing for sale at the end of this presentation. I'm not trying to convert you. Uh, I'm not looking for followers. I want you to be students this morning. Students question the knowledge. They go out and they get other sources of information on the same topic and they make up their own mind. So I offer that you chew the meat and throw out the bone this morning. But why am I doing this? Because after 24 years of being a realtor, I realized that our industry needs to improve its standards. Um, that we're, we're having too many poor interactions with other realtors. We're having um, challenges with some of our clients. And I think some of that is brought upon ourselves because of how we show up to work, um, whether it's through lack of training, lack of sleep, uh, lack of organization. Um, and I just, you know, and I put this on me, you know, this, this started with me. Um, this was me recognizing this in myself. And so I said to myself, I got to have better habits, better disciplines. That's where the coaching came in for me. But beyond that, I wanted, I wanted to have better experiences with the other realtor on the other side of the deal. I wanted to have um, better experiences with my clients and have them have better experiences because when you own and operate a 100% working by referral business model, advocacy is key. And if you're not closing escrow with an advocate and all you're getting is a commission check, that is a difficult way to build a career. Uh, it's the advocacy that gives you the compound effect on building your business through referrals. So that's my motivation here. It's purely that. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I am not going to I'm not going to leave this meeting worried about whether you go and do it or not. Uh, it, again, I'm not trying to sell anything here. I'm just trying to share a concept that has worked really well for me over the last 24 years. And it's not just something I created. It's something Melinda can attest to. A lot of this we learn through our coaching. So let's do a little uh, fun example here. A lot of us own a business. A lot of realtors don't realize when they get their license, they just bought a business. But the business is always creeping up on us. It's If we're unorganized, if we're out of control, if we're not getting enough sleep, we're not taking care of our basics, our business is running us. And eventually, if our business is running us, 
it starts to affect our clients. And guess what? Our clients aren't too happy about that. In fact, some clients are so unhappy that they decide not to work with us. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. So let's move on. The superhero complex is the first thing I want to address. I think a lot of us think every morning we get up and put on a big red cape and we've got to be the, the superhero for everybody that we work with. Uh, and I'm, I'm sharing that if we learn how to manage our anxiety over having to be all things to all people, if we manage our guilt about being available constantly to all people, and let's face it, we can manage our greed. We don't make every dollar that's out there. We just, we make enough that serves our goals and our needs. Then we can move on to what I'm about to share with you. So right now, what I'm going to uh, say is that when we fail to recharge our batteries, we're going to fail eventually all five circles in our life. And what Melinda and I learned through our coaching is we have a personal life that is made up of our mental and physical health, the things that enrich our mind and the things that enrich our body that we do, whether it's uh, physical activities, reading, uh, going to church, whatever it is that feeds your brain and, and keeps your body healthy. Your family and your friends, your relationships, they can be affected. Your business certainly can be affected. Um, and that's everyone from your clients and your teammates to the people you network with to build your business. Uh, your spirituality can take a hit because maybe it, it challenges your faith. Maybe your attendance to your church or your synagogue or wherever you go to pray or um, your participation in extracurricular activities like charitable events and, and fundraisers and things get, suffers. Um, and then, of course, your finances suffer. And when your finances suffer, all the other circles are affected by that. And this all comes back to serving your why. And your why really is looking for the balancing of these five. And we're taught it's balancing, not balance, because we'll never truly achieve true balance, but we can, we can attempt the balancing of the five circles. And I'm gonna break that down to three main points on how to do that from, from the concept of setting boundaries. Um, you, having office hours and a closing time having a day off, and going on holiday, taking vacations. Let's talk about point number one, closing time and office hours. My friends, you're not an emergency room. You are a doctor's office. A lot of us operate our business like we are at the front desk of an emergency room and the doors are bursting open, people are pouring in all hours, um, ambulances are rolling in, sirens are going off. And that's not how our business has to be. We can be the doctor's office where there's office hours. People come in, they're sitting in the waiting room. The kids are playing with the toys. The parents are reading the magazine. They're waiting for their turn to see the doctor. The family doctor concept where you're always there for them when they need you. You've built a relationship with them because you've dealt with them and, the, and then their kids and their kids' kids. And it's a concept that takes you away from the flurry and the anxiety of having to be an open all hours and be ready for all situations. So the, the tips I'm giving you today, I'm gonna to highly recommend you start by, if you're not doing this at all, start with one day a week. Don't try to do um, a complete revamp of your business because it'll never work. It's like trying to go to the gym and, and work out three hours the first time and you haven't been to the gym in, in years or trying to uh, go on a crash diet. It just never works. You can't sustain it. So start with uh, just one day a week if you're not already doing this. If you are already doing some version of this, then maybe just make some modifications to what you're already doing. So let's talk about the concept of office hours. And it starts with, obviously, you need to pick office hours that are going to serve the majority of your clients and yourself. Um, otherwise, what's the point? So, um, and what I mean by that is basically giving you enough downtime in the evening, say, or in the morning, wherever you choose to have it, so that you can attend to your personal enrichments, your hobbies, your, your um, if you're taking a class, if, you're, if you like to work out, spending time with your kids or your spouse or your significant other. 
um, how I do it is I break down the year and, and, and this is after years of paying attention to how my demand flows. So uh, I'm just coming at, to the end of my first um, January through April, where I, I'm open from seven in the morning to six at night. And unless a client tells me ahead of time that they need me at six, like two days ago, I started a Zoom meeting with a brand new buyer at six and was on Zoom with him till about 730. But I knew that was coming because it was planned. But the random after six o'clock, I'll never know about because uh, my phone goes on do not disturb and I'm not checking emails and texts after six. I'm focused on my family at that point. Um, now come May, I'll extend those hours because we're in daylight savings time and um, you can show more property. And, um, and I just find that I need to be more available. So I'll go seven to seven um, through, till, through October. And then I dial that way back to five o'clock, um, sorry, most days um, during the holidays because I have a lot of holiday related obligations personally and professionally networking and parties I host myself that I wanna be available for. I also communicate with my clients. If I go home sick, um, I let people know in my voicemail and my autoresponder. Um, if I'm at a training all day, I let people know. Um, I give them an expectation of, look, I'm not available now, here's why, but I'll be available later and here's when. Um, th that level of communication sets people at ease. Um, you're not gonna please everybody, this is not foolproof, but the majority of your good clients are gonna respect it. This is an example of my autoresponder. I don't reinvent these every night. These are, um, I make all different ones that represent what my hours are and if for that particular time of the year. And I just load it onto my autoresponder. They're pre-made and I can obviously customize them um, if I'm on vacation or um, at a unique, uh, like when I go to my Buffini training events, I'm usually gone for four or five days. Um, you, the closing time benefits, we kind of went over, but just real quick to recap, um, your spouse appreciates you or your significant other and your kids because now you're home for dinner or you're able to go to their after school events like uh, pre you know, sporting um, events and practices or a play or whatever your kids are into. Um, you know, going for a walk with, with your, um, your family after dinner with the dog, you know, going to the gym, taking a class, hanging out with friends, doing your hobbies. I mean, we have a life outside of real estate. And, you know, I, I, Melinda mentioned, I play the drums. I get in good um, 45 minutes to an hour almost every day on the drums. I can't do that without boundaries. And that's important to me, um, especially after some of my days. It's fun to beat on something. <laughs> um, you know, and I like to go to bed at a certain time because I, I subscribe to Jocko Wilnick's um, Up Before the Enemy. Um, now, I don't get up at 434 in the morning like he does. But um, I, I'm up usually about 5.30 every morning and that requires going to bed by a certain time at night and having accomplished everything I need to accomplish before bed so that I can lay my head down and actually have a, a clear mind to go to sleep. Uh, and this serves me well because I get a lot of work done before the phone starts ringing between six in the morning and nine in the morning. So how it works is as you get each new client, you introduce them to your hours. And you vet out right then and there if they're going to have a problem with anything. Um, if you let them know in advance, nine times out of 10, my clients just, okay, you know, they respect that. And I always let them know if there's a, an exception to that rule needed, just let me know. Just give me notice um, because I'm making personal plans in the evenings. And um, so, I'm, so I'm not always going to be available to accommodate that. Um, and, and I'm sharing that with you. I'm not saying that to them. Um, I put do not disturb on my phone. I use an iPhone. I can set it to do not disturb. The only people that can break through that are my favorites and my contacts. And all the, the only ones that are favorites are family and very close friends. Um, I use my vacation autoresponder on my email every night. I literally go through the ceremony of it's around six o'clock. So I go and I'm going to close my business. I'm turning the open sign to closed by turning on the vacation autoresponder so that people that email me after six know they're not gonna hear from me till after 7 a.m. Um, some of you might have a fear, I don't wanna tell people I'm closed. I don't want them to have that impression. Okay, just tell them you're booked. When I first started doing this, I didn't say I was closed. 
I didn't have the, I didn't have the courage to, to um, tell him I have set hours. So what I told him is, oh, I'm already booked. Um, so can we pick another day? You know, and now that booked might have been, I'm, I'm just going on a date night with my bride, or I was planning to, uh, my neighbor was going to come over with the guitar and we were going to jam in my garage. Now, is that more important than selling a house? Probably not. But for my mental health, it's more important as far as I'm concerned. Um, you got to do what works for you, though. And I don't know where some of you are in your business. I'm 24 years in, so I can be a little more selective and cherry pick how I run my business. I certainly was not doing this in the early part of my business. I was taking everything and anything I can do to stay busy and make money. Um, but th that did not work well for my first marriage. <laughs> so um, that's the other thing that kind of drives me to do this. I've been married to my bride, Eilina, for almost 21 years now. And our marriage works well because she knows she can count on me to have some personal time. So she's extremely patient and supportive with me when I am busy because she knows she's got guaranteed time coming too. Happy marriage, happy business, happy realtor. Um, key component to this working is people will respect your boundaries if you respect your boundaries. So you can't answer your phone. You can't respond to text. You can't check emails. Otherwise, they're going to go, well, he says he's closed at six, but clearly he's not, or clearly she's not. Um, one of the great things you can do, especially if you're only doing this once or twice a week in the beginning, make personal plans so you can't be available during those times. And, and you, get, you get to go out and have some fun with family, friends, or, or just with, on, on your own time with uh, a hobby. Point number two, um, it's going to go a little quicker now. Um, I always share with my clients kind of tongue in cheek, very, you know, very lightheartedly. Um, I'm, I'm closed once a week. I'm closed on Sundays. When I'm onboarding a new client, I let them know I'm available to you Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., whatever time of the year it is. Um, I'm closed on Sundays. That's my family time. That's time for um, you know going to church, family, and, and personal things. If we can't get it done in the 70 hours plus a week, I'm offering you six days a week, I don't think there's a magic bullet that's going to make Sunday the one that would have gotten it done. It's, it, you know, we should be able to accomplish everything um, between Monday and Saturday. Well, what if a property comes out on the market Sunday? It's likely not going to be not available on Monday. It'll be available. Any other property coming out normally is coming out Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday in our market. And we want that offer in by Saturday anyhow, because a lot of times they're, they're making their decision Sunday. Um, so I, and, you know, and, and in extreme cases with a good client, hey, if you need me to ask one of my associates to cover for me on a Sunday, because it's just life or death to you, I'll make arrangements. Um, so I picked the day that worked best for me to me, there's a lot of open houses on Sunday and very little um, resistance on Sunday because I found a lot of my clients have personal plans on Sundays. So I picked the day that felt the least resistance to me and was important to my family. You pick the day that works for you. If one full day scares the heck out of you, then do what I did in the beginning. I did two days a week, half days. And what I basically did is I went in early I worked all morning. I made every active client I had aware I was at the office. I checked in with them. And then I went to lunch and never came back. And that's how I got my, my days off started. I did two half days. And then I finally got enough courage to stand firm on having Sundays off. As long as you explain this to each client coming on board, they're either going to agree with you or have a problem with it day one. And you can address it day one. You can come up with a solution day one. And at the end of the day, I'm at a point in my career where if that's just their only day off and they have a problem with it not being me serving them, then I will refer them out because that's how important it is to me. Um, you can also use an answering service or have an assistant or an associate that's on your team um, cover for you and you can cover for them. Um, in the early days in the Bay Area, I took um, occasionally took Sundays off. I was testing this out. And uh, I was partnered with um, 
a friend of mine, Dawn, and she took Saturdays off because she was in a Jewish family and Saturdays were more important to her. So I covered her Saturdays. She covered my Sundays and it worked beautifully. And we didn't charge each other or anything. It just, you know, it was uh, an agreement, a handshake agreement. Um, and just like closing time on your day off, you just got to flat out ignore business uh, calls, business texts, business emails. Okay, final point, uh, vacation. We all deserve one. And I always share with people, go see Paris, but don't work from it. Because if you're working from Paris, you're not on vacation, you've just moved your office to Paris. This is the hardest thing to do is to go away and leave your business in, in somebody else's care. But this is how I do it. I'm gonna share with you that I have gone to Italy for two weeks, Ireland for two weeks, Canada for two weeks. I went to Tahiti and Hawaii for a month. And I've gone on many, many other mini vacations, long weekends, five day things. And I don't check in. Hand to God, I never check in. Why? Because I have set it up so well when I leave, I don't need to. As long as I trust who I've left in, in the care of my clients, which I do, it's one of Melinda and I's uh, teammates on the SoCal Real Estate Connection. How does it work? You, first of all, get someone you trust. You coordinate the dates that you're going on vacation with them. That's the main thing. And sometimes I work my vacations around her availability to make sure I've got her. Now, I've got a backup to her but I prefer to use her because she's who I use the most consistently. Um, you secure your backup and you educate your clients that you're uh, gonna go on vacation. And I start doing this well in advance, um, and, but you have a backup. Um, you educate your backup on who all your clients are gonna be and kind of the little nuances that is to serve each one of them. And then you set out multiple reminders um, so that consistently you're reminding everybody this is coming up and then you go away and stay away and forget about it. Logistically, this is literally how I do it. You pick the dates, you notify all your clients that you're onboarding or already working with. And I do this typically 90 days in advance. And I just start, I just let them know, hey, you know, it's, um, it's May 1st and in, um, August, I'm going to be going on vacation. Most of them are like, oh, August is so far away. Who cares? Um, but I'm telling them now, because if I'm still working with them in August, likely I'm probably getting close to, if not already in escrow with them at that point, um, 60 days out, I'm reconfirming with my backup agent. Everything's still good there. And I'm just sending a reminder email to all my active clients. I'm going to be going away in 60 days on these dates, but I have a backup for you. I'm also trying to start to percolate people's thinking of if anyone's got an issue with this or a concern about this, they're gonna start reaching out to me. Do the same thing 30 days out and 15 days out. I also at this point include anyone I'm working with in escrow. So my escrow team, title escrow, lender, uh, inspectors, I let my broker know um, just so that they know what's going on too. Um, and then the week of, I do uh, two types of meetings. I have a sit down meeting with my um, backup agent and I show her everyone that, that she's gonna be covering, what they're doing, what they're about, uh, all their details. I give her access to uh, the MLS, um, uh, so that she can see what they're looking at, if they're buyers, uh, if they're in escrow, I, I introduce her to all the people involved in the escrow so she knows where she is and what, what she's going to be doing. In most cases, she's just overseeing things. Um, probably the hardest thing I leave um, her in charge of is showing property and, and writing offers. Um, and then I meet with all my clients. Um, and, inter and I just tell them uh, who, who's going to be covering for them. And then I do an introductory email to each of them individually, introducing them to who's covering for me. Um, and then I take off and I go away and I, I forget about it. And um, I don't even look at my phone when we're gone. And we use my wife's cell phone. And um, 
for my, making reservations and looking at maps and um, I'll turn my phone on on um, airplane mode so I can't get uh, reached and if I want to use it as a camera and that's how I do it and I'm going to tell you the worst thing that happens you come back and everything's fine and you realize wow I wonder how necessary I am <laughs> because everyone had it down that you know the clients were fine some escrows open some escrows closed some people are still looking for property uh, there were no issues, no major problems. If there was, um, the, who covers for me is Denise. She knows how to handle them, and she does. Um, so it, it's an awesome feeling. Uh, it, and that's truly owning a business, by the way, when you can walk away and it still functions without you. So just a reminder, just like the emergency room, we're not firefighters, we're problem solvers. We don't have to sit around waiting for the alarm to go off 24-7. We just can answer the phone and deal with the texts and the emails and the things that happen during our chosen business hours. Um, one last thing I want to push home to you is we learned this through our coaching about Martin Boozer. Uh, he turned the Iditarod on its ear back in the 90s. The Iditarod is this massive long distance dog sled race in Alaska every year. And the mentality up until uh, Martin started racing was go hard, go fast, go as long as you can. Basically, you, you, you run these dogs into the ground. That's when you stop, eat, maybe grab a cat nap and get back into the race. Martin figured out the distance of the race, divided it by the days he had to race it, figured out how many miles he had to cover each day, how much downtime that allowed him. And he only went those miles. Then he stopped let the dogs rest, ate, got a good night's sleep or a good you know, cat nap, whatever it was that he was allowed each day. And it varied because the terrain varied. So he had to calculate for that, uh, which tells you it's not a, a plan in a vacuum. It is a plan that has to be flexible. But he won four Iditarods doing this. And nobody could figure out in the beginning how he was doing it because they were all racing past him. But what they didn't realize is in the first half of the Iditarod, they were all going past him, but he started slowly catching up and then exceeding what they were doing each day because they were starting to burn out and get fried and lose focus and lose energy and dogs were going down. And so the sled teams were taking a hit and they weren't as efficient as they were because they were down dogs. So if I figure if a guy that's putting his life on the line going across the snowy tundras of Alaska, um, sees the value in downtime and he's winning these major races, I think as realtors, we can accept that downtime has a value as well. So wrapping it up, I'm, I'm encouraging you to pick a time each night and a day each week to put down your tools and enjoy your life. You know, your cell phone, just like you on a dead battery, doesn't work. If you, you saw your surgeon walk into the operating room and he was yawning and tired, your confidence would be shook. And I guarantee you, your clients are shook when they see you uh, frayed at the edges. Um, you know, just like a vehicle that runs out of charge or gas, when we run out of gas, we're going nowhere. And, you know, if you were sitting on the plane and you saw your pilot come on and he's yawning and drinking a Red Bull and popping aspirin, that's not encouraging you to take that flight. In fact, you might want to get off the plane. And some of our clients have probably done that to us over the years because of how we're presenting ourselves and we're not even realizing it because, oh, no, we're fine. We're fine. This is how it works. You know, Brian Buffini always taught us, give your family, give your clients the best of you, not what's left of you. And the only way to do that is to set some boundaries and rest and recharge. You'll go a lot harder over the long haul and you'll build a career. You know, the stat right now is 90% of the agents that get their license are not going to renew it in four years, or 95% um, of the agents that got a license today, five years from now, will be out of business. Those are the two stats. That was 80% when I became a realtor. It just goes to show you that technology has allowed us to work more blindly. We, 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 how many hours do we lose online? Because you, you just lose track of time. I'm just trying to bring us back to, look, there's there, we all got to make a living. We all want to have a career. We all have different career goals. 
Uh, my goals are different than yours. I'm a, I'm a 55 year old dad of a 25 year old son who doesn't live at home anymore. So I don't have little kids and, and my house. I'm, I'm married to my bride, but we get to live uh, kind of like, you know, like a young married couple's life because we don't have kids at home. We don't have a lot of the obligations that maybe some of you have. We're, we're not taking care of, of an, um, uh, an elder uh, family member, you know. So my situation is completely different than any of yours. And so, but chew the meat, throw out the bone, take what I've shared with you today and apply it where it, it can work for you. I hope it does. Um, I want you to have a good life. Melinda and I were, were coached to impact and improve the lives of others. And that's what motivated me to be here today. And I thank you for your time and your attention. We're so happy for that. Thank you. Um, I have a question now. I think you mentioned it on in another talk that you had discussed about when you're on vacation and your agent that's covering for you writes an offer for your buyers, then how do you work the split? Do you do you take a referral fee or does she take a referral fee? Yeah, so we, um, we there's a there's a uh, literally a menu of all scenarios that could possibly happen and what I plan to pay her accordingly. So um, there's a difference between, I just showed them 26 properties and she happened to show them the 27th property and put them into escrow. That's a referral fee versus she showed them 20 properties while I was gone and put them in escrow. Now I step back and that becomes her deal and I take a referral fee. Um, and that literally happened last October. Um, when I got back from Montreal and Quebec, um, she had showed a bunch of property to one of my buyers, put them in escrow, and they were they were um, a week into escrow when I came back. So at that point, I'm not going to take them away from her. Um, I, we, we role reversed. I made myself the referral agent and just and let her do it because I wanted to be fair for for her. I want her to be motivated to want to help me. And, you know, I'm asking her to, on top of her own book of business, to handle my book of business, you know, and she's, she's a very busy agent as am I. I mean, I, I fluctuate between doing about 9 million and 12 million in sales a year. I'm not, you know, in the stratosphere, but I'm, I'm in the top 5% of big block. Um, and she's um, that caliber agent too. So, um if I have a structure for all the scenarios, if she's working with one of my buyers, all the structured scenarios of it, you know, she's working with one of my listings, you know, how comprehensive it is. And I reimburse her for tours. If she goes on tours that don't result in her getting anything more than a referral fee, I give her a little extra for fuel and time. Um, and, but, but if she ends up being the primary and I take the referral fee, then I, I assume all that compensates her for everything she did to get there. Um, you you got to kind of dial that in between you and the person you're working with. Um, I used to do it with another agent years ago, and we didn't charge each other anything. We just, I covered his business when he was gone. He covered mine when I was gone. Uh, we did it annually. So it was a um, very much in balance and it just worked out that way. But um, he wasn't always available to me. And I know in the back of his mind, it was because um, he was busier sometimes when I was leaving. So I just found it's better to, to compensate people appropriately. And again, I'm not trying to make all the money out there. Uh, to me, if I got to give up a portion of my commission to the person covering all my clients for me and taking good care of them, so I can go have a two week vacation where I don't think about work, that has so much value to me. And I'm going to tell you something that one of the best feelings in the world to me is that I literally do not think about work when I'm gone. And it just the, 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 the decompress, it mm -hmm. takes about three days, by the way, for me, but when you're there, oh my God. And a little trick, uh, if I come back from vacation on Sunday, I don't tell my clients I'm back till Tuesday. I give myself a one day buffer at home just to kind of acclimate back to reality. I don't dive right back into work. I give myself a buffer day. That's great. Thank you. Um, 
So that must feel really good. I know when I used to teach school, it was nice because I had summers off unless I was, you know, teaching summer school, which I didn't usually opt to because you're fried after a whole school year. But it took me about a week to get into the summer groove. Um, But it was nice to have that. And in real estate, we never have that unless we set it up, like as you described, you know, we have to set that for ourselves because nobody, our broker's not going to come in and do it for us. Nobody's going to come in and do it at all. Um, So what do you, what do you do typically in your mornings? Like, and if anyone else has questions, feel free to chime in. You can unmute yourself or send a question, you know, through the chat uh, for Thomas. Um, But I'm curious, what do you do in the mornings? Like in that, you know, five to eight or nine o'clock time frame before you start returning calls and doing that? What does your morning look like? Um, I do kind of a, I I don't know if anyone's read the book, The Miracle Morning, uh, Hal Elrod, but um, I do a modified version of that. I'm um, just like I do modified yoga. (laughs) Um, But um, so it's um, getting up um, just, there's a value to that quiet downtime. Uh, Usually Eileen is still asleep. Um, First thing I'm doing is I'm making my coffee and and feeding my dog and I, I take him out. Um, usually play with him out in the backyard for a little bit. Then it's, uh, I do my yoga. So there's the exercise part of the miracle morning. Um, I I try to read a little bit of something non-real estate first, something motivational. And then I I sneak in a couple articles that I got yesterday that I go, oh, I got to read those. You know, uh, I've got a lot of title escrow and lenders that send me stuff. And uh, occasionally they send me something that really um, is good information I want to I want to know. Um, so I'll read those. And then um, I do a little journaling um, and I review my goals for the day. So um, I, I review not only my schedule, but um, the goals I've set. Um, I do um, the 12 week year and I have an accountability partner. So and, and I meet with her every Friday, um, uh, usually from 730 to eight. And I'll tell you, I've been um, I've been meeting with her for eight years, um, every Friday, um, with the exception of when we're on vacation or somebody's sick or something, and, and that's been powerful too. And um, and so I'm driven to that call every Friday. Um, I know that's coming, so I need to do these things because I don't want to ever report to her. I didn't I didn't do the thing that my basics. Um, so it's really a lot of the miracle morning stuff. It, it's exercise, it's journaling, it's reading. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, a little bit of meditation. Honestly, that's the modified part. I don't always meditate because I, I don't force it on me. I'm not always in the mood to meditate. But when I do, I, I created my own meditation. I, I got a, um, a, a a narrator that I really like and I got my own um, visuals and I created my own slideshow. And I put that on and it kind of, I, I, I watch the slideshow and then I kind of drift into it. And, and, and sometimes I do that because I need it because it's, um, it's either was an intense day yesterday or it's, I know it's going to be kind of an intense day today. So I'll do that to kind of pre, preload my calm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Ease into it. Um, that's great. So you mentioned a few different books. Um E-Myth Revisited, Miracle Morning, 12-Week Year. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any favorites? Um, or is there what, is one of these your favorite? Well, um, I'll always, you know, if I could only ever have one book, the E-Myth Revisited made such a huge impact on me. The reason I actually went into real estate is because of the E-Myth, because I was going through the 12-month training to um, make my entertainment company better. And what Mm -hmm. I realized is I was putting a lot of time and effort into something that had a shelf life because now I could step back and be a manager and have employees, but I loved being a DJ. And, you know, at some point people don't want a a gray haired DJ. Um, And, and at some point I don't want to load and unload a thousand pounds worth of audio gear. (laughs) So I realized that as I was heading in, you know, in, I was in my early thirties at that point, um, I needed to have a plan that um, took me past 40. 
And I realized that was going to be real estate. So that book actually shifted my focus and to, to thinking long-term and being goal oriented for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's always my go-to, but I love, um, there's a book, it's a parable um, called a referral of a lifetime. And it's actually uh, an old partner of Brian Buffini's from the very early days. Now they didn't part ways on the best of terms. So it's not a book I mentioned around Brian, <laughs> but a referral of a lifetime is a wonderful book on learning the value of networking and um, paying it forward. Um, I love extreme ownership, Jocko Wilnick. That's about owning it. When when you're when you're a team leader, no matter who goofs up on your team, you've got to own it. It's your responsibility. You don't make excuses. You fix the problem, and, and you you um, you handle it um, publicly, uh, professionally. If you need to if you need to um, spouse somebody uh, privately, then that's privately. But it's you know. If one of my team members fails, I've learned through this book that somewhere I failed them because outside of it being a personality issue, um, somewhere along the line, I didn't train them right. So I have to own that. And it makes me better. And then I get to make them better. Um, mm -hmm. And if they don't get better, then it also gives you a notice that it's time to replace them. Um, yeah. So those are some books that I really love. And then, you know, a lot of the books that Brian's brought, you know, Greatest Salesman in the World. Um, and uh, I think uh, uh, Acres of Diamonds. Yeah. You know, you, you know a lot of them, Melinda. We. Yeah, I've read Emith Revisited twice now. I probably should read it a third time. There's so many good nuggets in there. We could go on and on about just books. Yeah. So when do you find time to read? Do you put it in the morning time or yep. do you put it at night before you shut down? I mean, you said you read articles and such in the mornings, but... I can't set aside 15 minutes a day to read because I want to go longer. You know, I want to read like an hour or sometime. So if I do 15 minutes, I feel like I'm just barely getting into it. Or I'll say maybe a chapter. I'll do a chapter. Yeah. That's and how I do it in the morning. Um, I divide my reading time because I, I, I like to have a cup of coffee in the morning after I've done my yoga. And um and what and I, I've I've done the yoga, so I've kind of got myself calmed down so uh, to, to focus to read. So I'll read a chapter of a book that motivates me or trains me, um, like E Myth. Uh, but then I'll read some business um, articles, and it, usually it's articles, so it's quick reads. It's like you know maybe five hundred words. Uh, and you can you can crank th three or four articles out in ten or fifteen minutes. Um, so then I feel like I've got my daily motivation and I've um, also got my education. So I'm on top of things for when my client asks me about something that's trending right now in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I'll read before bed a lot of the time too. Um, it just depends. Some nights we watch, we have our programs we like to watch and other nights it's a dead night on TV. And those are the nights um, we'll, we'll sit in bed and read to, um, before bed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I read a lot on vacation and and Sundays. That's what I love doing on Sundays is sitting out in the garden. Um, yeah. I got a spot and I read out there. Nice. Good. Well, um, if we don't have any other questions or anything, you all have uh, Thomas's information from his last screen. And uh, I'm sure if you email him or text him, he'll get back to you during his normal business hours. Yes. <laughs> yeah, put me to the test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Who is it? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm a little bit like a, uh, I could start a new, uh, new agent. I worked about for two years or so. Oh, can you start again? I didn't hear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, I am a little bit new agent. I work you know, as an agent for about two years or so. So like until like I started 2021 and until the 2022, like the middle, it was very hot market. Mm -hmm. So it was so much fun. And I had, you know, can could work with a lot of buyers and at open house, a lot of, uh, you know, buyers came and some, you know, made some transactions. It was uh, pretty good. 
But then starting the second half of last year, you know, shifting started and it became uh, harder. So it's a little bit like a hard time for me and I didn't even have experience uh, slow market and how to adjust it or that or, or, or that. And, you know, it's very different uh, when I started as a realtor. So like my question is, you know, everybody says it, it's not easy, it's, you know, it's a little bit slow. So for me, I'm, I feel like I'm very goal oriented oriented or oriented person so my i think my frustration and hard uh mentally hard is like when i don't make uh, reach my goal for example you know i want to make appointment like three appointments this week but then i could not make appointment and i want to make one deal at least you know a month but i couldn't do it so those like those things when you know i did not reach my goals you know it's a little bit pressuring and hard for me stressful so how do you handle those like you know when we when i you know don't reach my goals and you know uh, don't like meet my expectations so how can you handle mentally or <laughs> can you coach me Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, well, there's a lot to unpack there. I'll address um, first of all with the the slow market. Uh, what I what I always share with my agents that I mentor with, um, you know, I was slow too. By the way, it, it affected all of us. Um, but I was slow working with clients. I was not slow. I was very busy during the slow client time because that's when you go to work on your marketing and your branding and taking classes to. Now you got a little bit of time to take a class to make you better or to learn something, a new, uh, you know, right now AI is a big thing, learning about AI or learning about something that'll help you have more tools in your um, tool belt. Um, as far as not reaching your goals, that happens to all of us too. I don't hit all my goals. Um, and then I have to re-examine them. I go, I'll look at it a couple ways. Did I reach too high? Should I have broken that? Uh, that one goal down into maybe five goals and use a uh, five goals stepping stone to get to the ultimate goal um, or what got in the way of me achieving that goal because maybe something i didn't plan properly or maybe i, I allowed something to distract me it it's it's a time that i get to reevaluate okay what if i'm being honest myself what what got in the way of me ac accomplishing this and how can i avoid that next time? What can I set up um, to prevent that from happening next time? Um, so there's always something you can be doing to improve yourself, even when you're not getting the results you want um, in the moment. It gives you the clues to go back and be better the next time. And just having the patience and the faith that that is how it's going to work. Um, and it does. I mean, uh, you know, I um, I brag to uh, my clients, I'm always going to be a better agent next year than I am this year because I'm still going to take classes. I'm still going to be coached. I'm still going to network uh, with other agents. And, and that's my final point on to your question. Um, if you've got a good circle of realtors you trust, there's kind of a cone of silence. They're not going to use it against you. In other words, be honest with people and, and talk to them. Um, I just had a, a meeting last night with about 14 Buffini agents from all around the country, and they're, um, they're all newer agents. And people are kind of sheepishly asking about how what to do when it's slow. And I'm like, look, guys, let's be honest. It's been slow for a lot of us. It's the market shifted. We knew it was going to shift, and it shifted. The difference is don't let it surprise you. If you know it's coming, what are you going to put into place to keep yourself busy and productive and setting yourself up for the next wave, you know? Um, and you don't just sit idly by and hope and pray it changes quickly. You gotta go out and create your own economy. And the best way to do that is to stay active in the activities that are producing leads and prospects and furthering relationships. It's a good time to reconnect with your soul clients, reach out to them, see how they're doing. Don't go fishing for a lead with them. Just check in with them. How are you doing? How's the house? Is there anything I can do to help you? That care that you're showing them is the reminder they need. That, oh, yeah, I should be sending Sarah a referral. I know somebody at work that might be wanting to sell or buy. Uh, and I didn't call and ask for the referral. 
I, I call to ask how they're doing. They know what I do for a living. So you can do a lot of stuff like that. But I think it's important to have some colleagues that you can confide in um, because you can share uh, what you're going through and then collectively mastermind how to um, get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question, Sarah. That happens to all of us too. And I've been in this business for 20, 20 years now. So it's never always just busy, 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 as much as we would kind of like it to be, you know? Um, so just sharpening the, the saw during the downtimes. And if you have any questions beyond, I know it's uh, we're coming up on 11 o'clock now and um, we want to respect everyone's time because we've been taught so well here how to do that. Yes. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, you can always call or email, you know, Thomas or myself um, in the chat box here. I added the names of the books that he mentioned. And I also added Kaizen Way, my yes. author, but that's a good one about setting your goals and, you know, taking baby steps toward even bigger goals. So that's a really good book too. Um, we could have another time here just talking all about books, but um, Thomas, um, what's the name of your podcast? And you said that you used to do it, but is it still available on the app store or? No, I took it down because um, as you know, Melinda, one of our other teammates, David Sedoni, um, started mm -hmm. a podcast and um, his was doing so well and it didn't make sense to have two podcasts and the same team. So I took mine down because I was really too busy to do it properly anymore, and um, and Dave and and I didn't want to compete with David's. Day, I, so I I just took it down. But it was um, the original one was the uh, real estate podcast show, um, mm. which it wasn't mine. I was a co-host. I was actually interviewed on it, um, mm. and then the guy uh, liked our dynamic so much he invited me to be a co-host, and I ended up doing that for three years. And then I started a podcast when he decided to stop called Postcards from Success. Now you can find it on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. I posted a lot of them there. Oh, um, okay, so they're but, still there. Yeah, but it's no longer on iTunes or, or Stitcher or any of those, but okay. you, you, can, you can see the, the video component of them on my YouTube channel. Okay, and you're still pretty active on Active Brain, right? You still I post- I blog it. daily. I forgot to mention that that's one of the things I do every morning is I blog every morning, um, six days a week. Wow. I, I, I'm an avid blogger. I'm, um, I write a lot of articles. Um, mm -hmm. um, so it's something I love doing. Um, I don't even think of it as work. Yeah. Well, you're so gracious with your time with us and we really appreciate you coming. Oh, and my pleasure. It is 11 o'clock, so we yep. will sign off. And if you guys have any questions, you know, reach out to us. We do. Like to help people and, um, you know, we've all been there and sometimes we still are there. It's just a matter of how you stay in action. So thank you, you guys. Thanks, have everybody. a good day and we will see you out there soon. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye.